Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and if not, know that you can turn it around anytime you want and I trust that you will. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the most realistic way to place a design on any shirt or any surface for that matter. And here's a clue. It's not going to be Blendif. There's a flaw with Blendif and we're going to discuss this in this video. This is something else. It's also based on the brightness and the darkness value, but not Blendif. It's going to be much better. So without Without any further ado, let's get started. I'm excited to share this with you. Back at the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. So our happy subject today is wearing a relatively darker t-shirt. If she was wearing a white t-shirt, it would have been way easier. We could just place the design and change the blend mode to multiply. But in this case, it's a little more complicated. And this is a great example to learn how to place your designs on any kind of surface with any kind of color. So here we have our design in Adobe Illustrator format. No worries, you can paste Illustrator format right here. It can be a PNG, it can be a Photoshop document, any format will do. So you can just simply drag it and drop it right over your canvas. Now, if it's made in Adobe Illustrator, if it's an AI file, this will show up. Just choose page and crop to bounding box and hit OK. And your design is right there. The next step simply is transforming and molding the design according to the folds of the t-shirt. And you can use any method that you like. You can use warp, you can use liquify. So first of all, let's make it smaller. And she is a bit tilted, right? She's standing in style. So something to learn. Anyway, so tilt the design slightly and let's make it smaller as well, just like this. And you can place it however you want. This seems to be about right. Now, since there are not many folds in her t-shirt, we don't have to do much just a little will do. So let's go to filter and then liquify. Before you do anything, make sure this is a smart object. Now, since we placed it, it is usually a smart object. If it's not, you can first check by the symbol. This symbol simply means it is a smart object. And if it isn't, you can go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Right now it's already there. So um, that is grayed out. So let's go to filter and then liquify. Now we need to see through the design to look at the folds of the shirt. To do that, scroll down on the right hand side and make sure you have checked show backdrop. And we want to see the background layer, right? And we want to see the background layer behind the design. And of course, you can increase or decrease the opacity of the design. So now we can zoom in and mold it according to the folds of the t-shirt. Now there are not many folds here. We can see some slight folds so we can push it in a little bit. See we are bending the horn accordingly so that it's a little noticeable. Not much folds here. Let's scroll down and in here if you just decrease the opacity there are some hard folds and this is what we need to watch out for. So let's first of all decrease the opacity all the way to the left to see what the folds are like and then increase the opacity and according to the fold let's tuck inside the excess alrighty I think that's pretty much enough now if this was a little more folded we might have to put in some more work now some of you are going Unmesh why the hell are you not using displacement maps or warp for that matter well let's say I like spicy food there are some of my friends who just cannot handle spicy food. Does that mean that they're not my friends? Actually, some of my closest friends cannot handle spicy food. So when it comes to food and flavors, there's no right or wrong. There's no chocolate is better than vanilla. For some people, vanilla is better. So similarly with Photoshop, there's no technique which is right or wrong. Whatever works for you, you should go above and beyond and use that. And even if it's against me, if it works for you, please use that. Now, in this case, there are not a lot of folds and Liquify gives me more control over just bending shapes here and there. Warp also gives you more control. And if you like Warp, use it. Now, when it comes to displacement maps, it might not be accurate all the time. And in my opinion, I think displacement map is best for surfaces which have tiny little textures that if you start doing with Warp or Liquify, you're going to grow old doing that. Doing all those millions of texture pieces, it's just impossible. In those cases, displacement map is the best. In my opinion, again, if you want to use anything else, please do. All right. Once you're happy with this, just hit OK. Now tell me one thing, my friend. When you print this design on a t-shirt like this, do you really think it's going to be sh just as sharp as this one? <laughs> Not at all a possibility. So we need to blur it a little bit to make it more realistic. So how do we blur it? You know this. Let's go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. Now we don't need to blur so much. Of course, not 200 pixels, about less than one. So let's zoom in. And look at the other textures and just compare how blurred do you think the design can get. So let's decrease it all the way to the left hand side and slowly and gradually increase it. In my opinion, I think 0 0.6 is more than enough. Hit OK. 
there you go doesn't make much of a difference but here's the before look at it it is so sharp just not possible let's turn on gaussian blur see now when you apply the blend modes and we apply those secret sauces it's gonna look much better coming to the most important part of the video some of you are wondering unmesh why are you not using blendif in all the previous videos you have always cited by blendif but in this case why the anomaly well let me share an example so let's forget this design for now let's create a brand new layer and now let's create a square just like this and we're gonna create a gradient inside of it so let's take the gradient tool take a simple gradient from black to white and let's draw a gradient just like this and let's say this is the design that we want to place on this shirt first we change the blend mode from normal to multiply all right now when we do it isn't looking realistic right now we only usually apply multiply in the darker areas so we double click on the right hand side and we take it away from the bright areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from right to left just like this right so now it begins to look a little more realistic okay because that part of the t-shirt is dark now this is an absolutely bizarre example it's complete black it wouldn't be but just to give you a sense of what can go wrong with blendif all right this is all right now we make one more copy for the bright areas and for the bright areas we change the blend mode to screen and we reset the blendif all right now we only want to apply it in the bright areas and not the dark areas now as we take it away from the dark areas you will notice it not only goes away according to the darkness of the t-shirt but also according to the darkness of the design which we didn't want we wanted to control it only according to the darkness of the t-shirt and not the previous design so when we move the sliders of the underlying layer it not only is considering the subject but also layer one right here the multiply one we don't want it to consider it we only want this layer the screen layer to consider the subject's brightness and darkness levels and that is the problem with blendif if you're creating multiple layers by the way adobe if you're listening it would be an amazing feature if we can choose the reference layer right here it's okay to have underlying layer right here in addition to that it would be fantastic if we had one more bar just for any reference layer that you choose so from the drop down menu we could choose the background layer or any other layer that would be fantastic thank you adobe if you're listening so that my friend is the problem with blendif so how are we going to get around it simple luminosity masks so first of all we have this dragon design layer we're just going to keep it turned off this is just a backup let's make a copy of that by pressing ctrl or command j and let's name this multiply all right let's turn this on and change the blend mode from normal you might have guessed it already to multiply of course we want to remove it from the bright areas and we will do it with the help of a mask so turn it off for the moment let's go to channels and you can use the RGB channel you can also consider using other channels if you wish RGB is fine hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of the RGB channel it's going to make a selection based on the brightness level so the brighter the area the more selected that area is going to be so let's turn this on and while the selection is still active click on the mask button now the opposite has happened if you have a look at the mask the bright areas are more selected are brighter of course and the dark areas are of course dark so that is why the dark areas are being hidden more as compared to the bright areas we want just the opposite we want multiply to be in the dark areas not in the bright areas so we will have to invert the mask by the way i just held the alt key or the option key and clicked on the mask to bring back everything all right select the mask press ctrl or command i now have a look how realistic this is looking now how do we modify this how do we just fine tune this with the help of curves let's say you completely don't want it in absolute bright areas so you can make those bright areas absolutely black to hide it from there and that is something we do with curves so with the mask selected let's go to image adjustments and choose curves ctrl or command m is also the shortcut for it if we take the left slider to the right you will see the bright areas slowly and gradually start getting hidden because if you look at the mask closely the bright areas are getting darker and darker all right so let's keep it somewhere where it doesn't completely go away it's still there but also realistic so at about i think right now there are some places where it's completely gone so slightly a little to the left about 91 is fine and if you take the right slider to the left you will notice that more and more dark areas are going to show up because have a look at the mask if we move it to the left 
see what's happening the dark areas are getting brighter and brighter so we don't want it completely there it looks like a flat design so let's take it to the right i think at about 185 this looks fantastic hit okay and there we have our first layer of multiply now before we move forward there's a flaw right here can you guess what that is i'm going to give you a hint it's related to color have you guessed it i hope you have and if you haven't let's learn this have a look at the color of the shirt and have a look at the design that we have added because of the nature of the way that we have added this design using this mask in a way that it's showing through less in some areas and more in some other areas and we have applied a blend mode on top of that which is already a projection the color of the shirt is coming through again i said if it were a white shirt there was nothing to worry about but this shirt already has a color and that color is mixing with the color of the design and we don't want that a lot so how do we take care of that by taking away the color of the shirt in that particular area so to make a selection of that area hold the controller command and click on the thumbnail of the dragon layer and then with the selection active create a hue saturation adjustment layer and you can take the saturation all the way to the left hand side but even that doesn't look real there should be something common here and <laughs> some color seeping through so let's keep it at about minus 44 that looks better now we have taken care of the dark areas with multiply what about the bright areas let's make a copy of the multiply layer by pressing ctrl or command j and let's name this screen now this looks good we're going to talk about this later but anyway first of all let's take care of screen now screen would be changed to blend mode screen of course and this will only be applied in the bright areas now we already have a mask for the dark areas so the mask for the bright areas would be just the opposite of that so select the mask and press ctrl or command i to invert it and as soon as you do that have a look at it isn't that crazy amazing look at this all the folds showing up so nicely now if you think the logo is not dark enough or bright enough you can make multiple copies of the multiply or the screen layer and also modify the masks so for example i feel that i need to make one more copy of the multiply layer i just selected the multiply layer and pressed ctrl or command j and uh, this is too dark so let's decrease the opacity slowly and gradually increase it let's set it to about 64 66 that's better and for the screen layer let's make a copy it gets too bright but we only want some areas to have the highlight so how do we make that change modify the mask so select the mask go to image adjustments curves or use the shortcut control or command and make sure the mask is selected curves is going to show up and now move the sliders so that it only shows up in the brightest of the bright areas so if we move the left slider to the right have a look what happens look at it oh my gosh so this is too much slowly and gradually let's bring the slider to the left more and more areas are going to show up that looks good to me now again this is too much <laughs> decrease the opacity about here as well i think let's set it to 64 that was 66 right anyway so this is nice here's the before here's the after a little more highlights adds a little more dimension i love it and if you feel like you want to do the same with multiply you can do all you want so this is multiply copy let's make one more copy of multiply and in this case you can select the mask press ctrl or command m again and keep it only in the extreme dark areas if you take the slider on the left to the right it's going to remain in the dark areas again the opacity is not too much so first of all let's hit cancel and increase the opacity 200 and then select the mask press ctrl or command m and now let's do it all right that looks good hit okay so here's the before here's the after adds a little more darkness in the dark areas before after depends upon how much of it do you want i think 100 percent is fine maybe we're gonna go with 80 percent and there you have it my friend now if you feel that the design is a little too desaturated no problem make one more selection of it by holding the controller command and simply clicking on the thumbnail of the dragon layer and then at the top we can create a hue saturation adjustment layer and just simply increase it that's all don't go too high so i think at about 30 let's keep it 30 30 is nice and the color comes back nicely just look at the design i just love it now you can make a group of all of it select the topmost layer hold the shift key select the bottommost layer that has anything to do with this design and then press ctrl or command g and create a mask and you know what to do take it away from the hand one of the easiest ways you can do it is just turn it off come back to the background layer select the quick selection tool and make a selection of the hand just like this and i think it does a pretty good job 
that area i don't think it's needed anyway let's turn it on let's go to the mask make sure black is the foreground color press alt backspace or option delete to fill that area with black <laughs> design is coming through from right here no problem take the brush black again as the foreground color just erase that area just paint over that area and there you go my friend isn't this fantastic now if you want you can also decrease the opacity of the whole thing at 100 i just love it this is a very nice print though so i just tweaked stuff a little bit you know sometimes we go overboard with the layers we created maybe too much multiply layers or screen layers or sometimes with too much opacity so play with the opacity take a break and get back see what looks good to you and here is the before and here is the final after so that's one of the most realistic ways to apply design on shirt in Photoshop. Again, keep in mind, there's no right way or wrong way. If it was a white shirt, just change it to multiply and that's pretty much it. If it was something else, maybe some other technique might work. But when you have a colored shirt and if you're talking about a technique where you have to use multiple layers with multiple blend modes, in that case, using luminosity masks makes sense. Just a quick little recap. First of all, place the design, mold the design according to the folds of the shirt, Tilt it, do whatever you want, transform it, and then create a multiply layer of that design for the dark areas and screen layer for bright areas. And to apply it in proper areas, we will use luminosity masks. We can simply go to channels and in the RGB channel, we can make a selection based on the brightness levels and keep it in the dark areas in multiply and just invert the mask and keep it in the bright areas in screen. You can also modify the masks using curves and also you can create multiple layers of multiply and screen according to your tastes and keep on modifying the mask one of the things you would notice if you do this is that if you're working with a shirt of some color that color might seep in and it might be favorable or unfavorable to you if you don't want that color you need to take that away like we have right here using the hue saturation adjustment layer but here's a surprise for you in this case this color goes so well with the design that even if I turn this off, it actually looks good. It just adds that color a little bit, but you can just turn this on and maybe just bring back the saturation of the original a little bit. So what does that tell you? There are no rules in art. You don't have to do exactly what I say, just experiment. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always gonna work. If the shirt was of some other color, you would need to do this. For example, let's say if the shirt was something else, if I create a hue saturation adjustment layer, and just to show this, I'm not making a perfect selection here. Let me add the color of the shirt. The more I add, the better. And now if I change the hue to, let's say, bluish or something like that, and maybe just make it a little darker, in this case, without this layer, the design just looks weird and bluish. And in that case, we do need it. So we do need to turn this on and just decrease the saturation for the original color of the design to show through. There you go. If we don't have this, it's going to look like crap. So depends upon situation to situation. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next fun. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?